Um, sorry to miss the last class. Um, I was really down now. So I would like to take a quick look at your charts. In the concentration of abiding in sound, right? Where does that appear? Concentration without repetition. Without repetition. repetition. Excuse me? Meditative stabilization of exalted speech. Hmm? Meditative stabilization of exalted speech. Hmm. Um, what does sound there mean? Is it that comes from sound? Well, we have abiding in fire and abiding in sound. Is it sound is the form of the mantra letters? <laughs> I think that's back earlier, isn't it? Can somebody find the exact place in the text? Because I believe it says sound, well, we'll see. Mm -hmm. Yes. Maybe it's the uh, concentration bestowing liberation at the end of sound. What that sorry, what that word sound means. <clears throat> See, there's one place where where it ends up as meaning like everything above the deity in front. You know, it, the, the meaning becomes extremely wide at some point right near the end. And it's either abiding in sound or bestowing liberation at the end of sound. What's the end in end of sound? Final nature. Well, you can read. Good. Yeah. That's all we want now. The final again, nature, what does that mean? I was just going to say, but then all of the other ones you're saying, even though one focuses on the emptiness, inherent, the emptiness of inherent existence, all of the other aspects are present. In other words, the deity in front. Say it again? That even though um, you, you're, the main focus in bestowing liberation is on emptiness, the other previous stages are still present. Correct. Now, how are you tying this in? Are you just making a remark or tying this into the word end or the word sound or neither? I'm tying it into the word end. And end. The end is. So you're is, pointing out that even though end means the final suchness, the emptiness of inherent existence of all these phenomena, the phenomena can still appear. And somebody search around, it's in the... You say leaving or abandoning states does not mean that these factors cease no. to appear. No. It has to do with the word sound. Hmm. Sound here refers to all four states listed yes. above. Yes, First, where is that? Page 94. Within what topic? <laughs> Concentration of stowing liberation at the end of sound. Ah, okay. So it is at the end of sound. Um, so it's the suchness of all of the factors that appeared before. What are the factors that appeared before? How does this text specify them? You said all four or something? The first state appearance in the divine body is the place or basis of mantra sound. Or, Nate, do you say, say that slowly? I beg your pardon. The first state, appearance in a divine body, is the place or basis of mantra sound, since the now, practitioner go, okay. who is appearing as a deity is the repeater of mantra. In other words, the question is, how could all of those, not oh, maybe every single step, but all of those previous imaginations be called sound? This first one is concerned with one's own appearance in the divine body. Why is that called sound? Answer, based on what you said. Repeat or mantra. Because this person, this divine person, is the repeater of mantra sounds. Thus, the repeater, the divine being, gets to be called sound. All right, the term sound gets to cover that. Okay, the next one. The second state is itself sound or whispered repetition. Okay. 
The third state, the mental one, is mental repetition of the sounds of mantra. The fourth state, quote, what are pure of words, close quote, these being the concentrations of abiding in fire and in sound, which involve the appearance of the sounds of mantra as if recited by someone else. So that can be called sound too, even if it's not a uh, rep. Uh, even if it's not repetition, even if it's not a concentration with repetition, right? Correct. I see. So this, these four are a way of including, aren't they a, uh, everything that came before in another format? Did you put these four on your chart? <laughs> You should put them on your chart. The four sounds, something like that. <laughs> you know? Are you with me? Uh, it would be interesting to see where they came. Does it make any sense? Yes, it probably will. <laughs> yes, probably. <laughs> yeah, it's like that, isn't it? You sort of think you know what is going on. It's now, exactly. just as I you thought. I don't. <laughs> oh. Now, uh, the concentration of abiding in sound comes after the concentration of abiding in fire. Now, um, are there sounds in the concentration of abiding in fire? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Where are they? In the, of the flame. in the middle of the flame. And it's as if somebody else is reciting it. But it's your own consciousness that's appearing as the flame and is appearing as those sounds, but it's, uh, you know, be almost like your own consciousness appearing like a speaker, a uh, hi-fi speaker. <laughs> Not as, you know, your own usual internal mo monologue. Very interesting uh, thing going on there between subject and object, right? The subject is appearing as somebody else's sound. <laughs> now, if that has sound in it, abiding in, if abiding in fire has mantra sounds in it, why is the next one called abiding in sound? Why is that specified? Feel free to look. It seems um, that the second one is specified as sound because it says that the yogi turns his or her attention from the moon disc and contemplates only the sound, whereas in the other, I mean, although there are, is this tongue of flame and a deity in the flame and all of that, really the focus is on sound, even though mm. the others are still there. The important word being the focus is, right? Now, the, even though the sounds were there in abiding in fire, now the prime <coughs> focus is abiding is, is the sounds themselves. And the rest of it remains. Mm -hmm. And also one version of it puts what? One version of the abiding in fire adds what to the process? You not only have a flame. That's a deity inside the flame. Deity inside the flame. So there's a bump on the log and the hole in the bottom of the sea. <laughs> there's a frog on the bump on the log and the hole in the bottom of the sea. And really, to understand these things, it's like that, right? This big divine body. <laughs> and then, you know? And then what? Inside the big divine body is? It's a moon disk. Is a moon disk. And the center of the moon disk is the flame. The center of the moon disk is a flame. The center of the flame is the deity. And the center of the flame is a tiny deity. Tiny deity. And then, <laughs> I don't know if it goes more than that, but probably. I think it does, doesn't it? Yeah. Look it up. In my yeah. body, there's like the heart of the tiny deity. Now, he had a moon disk with a flame, is that right? The small deity, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, so you've got, if we work it, how does it go? There's it's a bump a on the log and the hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a frog on the bump and the hole in the bottom of the sea, right? So you work it from the, the end back. So if we work it from the end back, what have we got? Small divine body. 
There's a <laughs> we have to say tiny. Give me a break. Tiny divine body. Well, isn't inside the tiny what? divine body? Isn't the no? You're yeah. You're right. It doesn't start with that. It starts with there's a the flame on the moon disk. Mantra letters in the inside. The there are sounds. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Sounds which are the mind. There are sounds, mantra sounds. Tiny flame. But the mantra sounds represent in the mind. Tiny mantra flame. sounds which are one's own mind. Understood. Uh, in a tiny, tiny flame. flame. In a on. 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 A moon disk at the heart. At the heart. At the heart. <laughs> <laughs> this is At the heart of the tiny a tiny divine, divine body, right? Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Right. Tiny divine body. Whoop. At the heart. <laughs> body. Um, at, at the heart. Heart. I hope somebody's writing this down because we need to distribute it. We have to sing it. Well, isn't it? <laughs> 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 on a moon disk? At what? The on a moon disk. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Is, um, it, is it in another flame, too? And then there's a big flame around the whole thing. Around the whole thing. So, what do we got? On a tiny divine body. How about a little bit of that? On a moon disk at the heart disc. of a tiny moon body, on, on a moon disk at the heart. On a moon disk. In a flame. In a flame. In a flame. At, a at a divine body heart. <laughs> in a flame, no kidding. Another, oh yeah. At, in another at the heart. Final. At the heart, right. Of a tiny divine body. <laughs> at the heart. A small one. Isn't it the big one now? No, but it's, it's the big still, small. It's the big small. Oh, it's still small. It's all small. So we have tiny. No. It's all small. small. No, this is <laughs> a tiny flame in a tiny divine body, and this is one that's. Is significantly it? bigger. Yes, <laughs> of the small divine body. More? It's wrong? It's wrong? Is it wrong? Yeah. Yeah. If there's there's only we I don't think the text goes any further than the tiny divine body. No, I don't think it's where does it go? Where? I don't see it. <laughs> it's only four, right? Are, are you doing? You it, I can read it forward. I yeah, read it forward. Okay, then the meditator. Reason. Now we are doing uh, abiding in sound, not right. abiding in fire. Right. Okay. The meditator contemplates the sounds, which, although the text does not explicitly say so, are viewed as being in the midst of a tiny tongue of flame, on a tiny moon, at the heart of a tiny deity, on a very small moon, at the heart of one's own divine body. So you're right. So you're right. right. Of the one's own divine mind. Yeah, it's hard. The, the vocabulary of the regular size. Like, shall we say regular size divine body for the last one? Regular size. Meaning the size of your body, of your usual body. Now there's the. Now there are a bunch of sounds in a tiny body. On a moon disk at the heart of a tiny divine body. On a moon disk in a flame at the heart of the regular sized divine body. <laughs> it works! Are we going to have to perform this? Yes. Yeah. The tap lines and everything. Sorry, performance. <laughs> So, if it started with, now there's a uh, regular size that's too awkward. How about your own regular size divine body? Now there is 
The rest is your own, too. It's the only problem, right? Goes all the way. Normal stuff? Now there is your own divine body. Now there's a... Uh, What's your name? There's a bubble hole in the hole in the bottom of the sea. I want to get in the bottom of the sea. <laughs> in a mandala. But you don't necessarily have to do that. Okay. Oh, that's good. There's a sound and a flame in so, the disc at the hmm? heart of the She had it. There's a sound and a flame in the disc at the heart of the teeny divine body. Yeah. At the bottom of the sea. There's, you know, then yeah, but you, you, then you have you've got to have something to substitute for in the bottom of the sea. <laughs> in your imagination. It would also yeah. have to be in a scoop. In imagination. <laughs> in imagination. <laughs> you know, we, we can't add something further to the meditation, right? So it would seem to me that, that you're trying to memorize this as a visualization, not necessarily as a, as a sequence or as a list. Oh, yeah, but you, one way to be able to visualize it is to do, be able to do a list. You do a list, and then when you actually sit down, you have some chance of checking, you see? Listen, yeah. You can actually I guess, just uh, repeat this whole thing as a mantra. <laughs> <laughs> See, I guess yeah, I since it goes the, uh, usually it will go the other way around. Right. You wouldn't start, you know. At the, you start your but you mind. see, as with the song, you start with one thing. You start with this one. Now there's your own divine body. Now there's a heart at your own divine. You know, I can't do it. Now there's a flame at the heart of your own divine body. Now there's a moon disk and a flame at the heart of your own divine body. Now there's a tiny divine body on the moon disk and a flame at the heart. Of, right? It really works that way. Right? And that is how you build it up. Isn't this flame on a moon disk? Yeah, but it's a, the mantra sounds in a tiny flame. Yeah. The flame is on a moon disk. It is. In a flame on a moon disk. Yeah. yeah, you want to switch yeah. moon disk and flame. Now, isn't that tiny divine body on a moon disk, too? Yeah, that's what I should They should all be on a moon disk. In the flame on a moon disk. In a flame on a moon. Well, disc. some people say that the divine no, body is on the moon disc too, in the flame. Right. There should be another moon disc. Uh, uh, it says here, um, set on a very small moon at the heart of one's own divine <laughs> body. So there's a moon between, right up. So yeah. Is that your own divine body? That would be like that Do, one. That so it's, you need another moon though, because it's a moon at your own divine body. You see, you, we have your own divine body, right. and is it just a flame at the heart, or the flame is on a moon? It's on a moon. It's on a moon. Yeah. And so then the inside the heart is a divine body. Is that just a divine body in the flame, or is it on a moon disk again? It just says it's, on, it's a divine body within the flame, and then imagining a flame on a moon disk at the heart of the small deity. Okay, so then you who were saying that this one should be eliminated were right. Actually, no, I th even think the flame should be eliminated, the, the first flame from the, on the bottom, because it seems like you have your divine body, and then you have a small moon at the heart, and then you have a tiny deity on the small moon, and then you have... No, no, you got a flame. Within the flame is a tiny deity. Yeah, you got a flame. Really? Yeah. That, I think I... We're going to get it right. <clears throat> So you got your own divine body, you got your heart, at the heart is moon disk, on it is a flame, in it is a tiny divine body. Uh -huh. And it, of course, is its own heart. Uh, and do we have a moon disk here or not? It doesn't really go beyond that as far as the text. But there are two, ver there are two versions in the text, aren't there? Are you are you doing the concentration? Yeah. There's two moon Sound. discs. Sound. Yeah. There is a moon disc there. There is a moon disc here. Yeah. The flame is on a moon disc at the heart of the tiny divine body, whereas there is no moon disc in the bigger divine body. I think there probably is then. There is a moon, no, there disc, is a moon disc, but there seems to be no 
flame. A court on page oh, in a flame. 90. Uh, right. It's the teeny deity on the small moon at the heart of one's divine Moon disc. Like okay. Yeah, I'm with you. Now, you're contradicting. You're saying there's a discrepancy between the explanation in my book and in <coughs> Solomon's book, right? Right. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the, the root text, There's usually good reason for that. The root text starts from what page? Are you? Um, page 159. Abiding in sound starts off where abiding in fire ends. Right. The fire has been established. The tongue of fire has been established in on the moon that is within the body. Your own divine body, there's a moon. Yes. On the moon, there's a flame. That's yes. Abiding in fire. Yes. And then you go on to abiding in sound. When, when you, you go on to that, you just place a tiny deity in that flame. Right. Period. Oh, and in the deities, well, according to Hopkins, right? That's the discrepancy. Is it the same deity, the small and the tiny? It's at 159. It's the right. same. It's the same. Mm -hmm. right. It's the normal size. I think so. Okay, between the normal, it's the same deity. The small and the tiny, they're the same. They're the same. And then there's yourself, which is. So where did I get this? <laughs> Uh, I I bet I have a good source somewhere, but um, and then two twenty three when you kind of explain a little bit, you say the same thing. Say what thing? On two twenty three, you say um, a small divine body is imagined within the flame that is on the moon disk at the heart of one's divine body. So well, I guess what you're saying so is then you're asking, it doesn't go beyond the tiny divine body. Huh. It stops there. You've got so i.e. within the tiny within body, there's nothing else. You don't go on to the generating another heart in the tiny body. In that heart, there's another play. Hmm. There's another. Hmm. Hmm. So on what page is the description in uh, Hopkins' book? Some have on 90, 89 and 90. And you have a note that says uh, that Sangapa does not explicitly mention the same flame, but that the Dalai Lama did. Ah, uh, OK. And yeah. a page reference in DVD to page 31. OK. That's your reference, page 31. So that's good to know. Yes, right in the middle of page uh, 31. He puts another flame on, a, on the... Now in that flame on the moon, place a small divine body with a tongue of flame at its heart in which the mantra sounds reverberate. <laughs> so that, so Which that, means if this got to be too much, you could cut off some of it. <laughs> yeah. The second one is a lot easier. But you see, once you've done the earlier one, abiding in fire, to repeat the whole big thing inside it, you see, well, you're, you're, you're taking a small deity and putting it in there and repeating the whole thing is probably rather easy. Probably rather easy at that point because you're duplicating. And the more you make it a duplication, the easier it would be to do. If there's a moon disk, you know, beneath the fire, is it? On one of them, you ought to have a moon disk beneath the fire on the other one. In other words, ease of imagination is, is important. But it sounds like from some of the wording of it that one of these tiny deities, I'm not sure which one exactly, is just in the flame and it doesn't mention it 
the flame is on a moon disk and there's a tiny disk yes. in the flame, but it doesn't. That's what he's pointing out. Right. That, that's all that Tsongkhapa says. I had forgotten that that was all he said. So are you saying now that we should assume that oh, well, it's, it's always the same? Uh, everything is on a moon disk, essentially? Or? Oh, you could or couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Um, let's see. In other words, it would make it easier to just repeat it. To repeat it. Uh, as one lama said, when the text isn't clear, do what is, uh, you can't just say easy, but what appears to your mind uh, easily. Nice. <laughs> One of the things just to, that I'm trying to point out is that although up through the concentration of abiding in sound, one is achieving calm abiding, that's not all that you're doing. Right. You're wreaking havoc with your mind. You're changing the way you view yourself, other people, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, okay? There are often categories that are superimposed on topics that cause the mind to close down. Oh, that's what you're doing. You're building up stabilizing meditation, and then you cease thinking about it, even though all these complex visualizations are going on. Uh, that. Uh, are not going to leave your ordinary sense of self and other in place. Speech, you need to um, look at um, somebody else's chart to get a little, a wider view. It's as if exalted speech begins with abiding in fire. Because exalted, the meditative stabilization of exalted speech begins. Begin begins with the third of the four branches in my mind. Yeah, that's how I have it. Oh, you do? Yeah. It's the Oh, you do, branch. don't you? Yeah, I do. Yes, I'm happy. And then it goes over there. I'm good. Yeah. Yes, the chart goes two directions. Yeah. Well, since okay. it straddled them. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to ask about that, whether the um, meditative stabilization of exalted speech really does start with the third of the four branches, or if it starts in the um, second part of the actual session, which is to do repetition, which is after you've already cultivated the four branches. Well, remember last time it was pointed out that Hopkins' book says, has both right. opinions on this matter. And I looked in some of those texts, and yes. it's a little bit ambiguous. You one would think it would theater. be, right? Because the repetition really comes when you get the moon there Dada, Simba, Shiva, so moon and the form of the letters around the moon facing inward. And then you repeat. So you can see that there would be, from one point of view, you could say the meditative stabilization of exalted species begins when you start repeating mantra. And the other way, you could just include it. Uh, you could do it another way and, and include those two parts. What do we know? What does Tsongkhapa say? He doesn't, he's not that clear. We just well, know that Hopkins says it both. It says independence on the four that's going to stand on the four. But he doesn't explain Which them here. He explains them here. Right. Oh, I see. Yeah. So, um, mm -hmm. so you can still look at it both ways. Yeah, sure. The way I, I interpreted that mm -hmm. um, is that you have the four branches and you're doing them sequentially. Yes. There's no repetition in them. But after that, you do them simultaneous. All of them are coming together, and that's yes. when repetition happens. And that's yes. why they're the four branches of repetition. But to get to that point, you need to go through them sequentially. And in none of the four branches are there repetition. So that's kind of a preparation for repetition. Yes. And really, I think if you view it as the first two, though, I and mean, why this comes up, is the first two are in one group. And then you're adding in moon and letters when you're moving to meditative stabilization of exalted speech. When you're doing the initial deity yoga, meditative stabilization of exalted body, the requirement, it does not include 
doing moon with mantra letters on it, okay? And that's why there's this split between the first two and the last two of the four branches. Right. I even and, okay. took the, I mean, I understand that first split of the two and the two, but then I took the first split of the two and the two as one whole split, which was kind of a preparation for repetition. So, did I lose you? The first two are body, and yes. the second two are with the moon disc and the letters. Even though those are two separate categories, yes. one is body and one is speech, I put them still as one bigger category, which is kind of preparation for repetition. And then those same four categories came back simultaneously when repetition occurred, if that made sense. It's making, an, yeah. I mean, it's like, I have a, I mean, a, yeah, one purpose of the meditative stabilization of exalted body, because it's sequential right. and moving to the more subtle, is as preparation for the speech. Right. So to add a new category that includes those four, right. I don't know. But I, I can see it, sir. I wouldn't argue against it. Because that's why then you can say why they call it the four branch repetition, because really there is repetition, but only when all four branches are there, and exactly. it's a sequential thing. Yes. Therefore? Therefore. <laughs> what is it? What are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was trying to figure out. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, sure. We all know you've got to have all four there. But it's like your final punch point. What? <laughs> meditative stabilization of exalted mm -hmm. speech doesn't start until after the four branches. Right. That's his point. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so the moon and the form of the letters belong to exalted body. Who knows? <laughs> you can put it where you want, you see? Because I, I think it's easier if we follow a water body system where you generate yourself first and then generate the deity in front. Because, Why? Because then... Um, is the, that the, his the, system? Yeah, the moon and the letters is on the heart of the guy in front, not yourself. And then when, when, so if you generate yourself first, and then you generate the deity in front, you generate the moon, you generate the letters, yeah, but and then you start the next part where the moons start moving to you. In I forget way. whether it's Buddha Guya Sarah. Then, then, then you go, it, it moves on sequentially that way then. Then from that moon then you start doing the repetition then it comes into your heart. Now why does Tsongkhapa say it's easier if you do other base first? Right then because you can focus on yourself, which is the main, because you have to make all the offerings. Yes! So how, so how are you going to handle that? Distracted. How are you going to handle that in your system, which which puts <laughs> well, if, which um, puts other base? So if, if you have generated your your self identity strongly enough, yes. which is what the system says, then there shouldn't be a problem having this no. deity in front of you. So in fact, so he's explaining why Barabodi's system is as it is, right? And how it could how it could be practical. Maybe you could say you could take a breather and do all these various things, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, an advantage of doing other base first is it sometimes is easier to imagine another being as divine and then oneself as divine. Um, and of course, once you generate other base and then do self base, it's not as if other base is entirely lost. It can immediately come back, and you can do the uh, moon and mantra letters there. But you have, I'm just arguing the other side. Uh, not, not arguing the other side, presenting Buddha as you have presented Barabodhi. Have we got the two right? I'm following Buddha and he's following Barabodhi. Is that right? Now, the, these more detailed ones where um, <laughs> w 
where you say what's done after inhalation and during inhalation, those are very helpful in the uh, repetition, concentration with repetition. Very helpful, because otherwise you get, you get uh, lost. I was lost as to where the uh, moon and, and so-called sounds, the letters were when they're first visualized. Of course, they're first visualized from the deity, from, as you pointed out. Asking forbearance for errors and deficiencies is done often in these rites. Oh, okay. And you, uh, and you've got it in the right place here, but you'll find in in uh, practice texts that uh, you're asking the deity. It's like saying, oh, "I really couldn't prepare uh, a very good meal today." Right. Tibetans do that; they lay out a huge meal. <laughs> oh, I really couldn't put together anything. <laughs> what? And of course, and that assumes that we you stop that. at that point, doesn't it? Excuse me? It assumes that you stop at that point. If you keep going, then you wouldn't do it at that point, would you? Uh, actually, in practice texts, they, it comes up during, okay. as you do various parts of it. Okay. It would seem in this something. case, one is, the way Tsongkhapa talks about it, you are leaving the session. Right. It seems that that would, in a sense, uh, throw off any sort of one-pointedness that you might have by you kind of getting, just as all these preliminaries of yes. offering this and offering this breaks that one-pointedness, it would seem that this would also, it would be more beneficial to just keep going if you were not stopping. So uh, what, you, what yours needs, uh, Jeff, is the uh, five paths and 10 grams. Okay. Now, they may have, did you have the five paths and 10 grams? Uh, I didn't. Oh. No. Me? Yeah. <laughs> Make sure to put in the five paths and 10 grams, because it shows you that that uh, concentration of destroying liberation at the end of sound has a tremendous amount in it. And you only find out that it does by superimposing the sutra system on the tantra system, on this tantra system. Yes. <sighs> so now, remember the usage of the terms concentration and meditative stabilization? not in the context of concentrations with and without repetition and meditative stabilizations of exalted body, speech, and mind, not in that context, but the other context. What's the other context again? It's like throwing a curve at you to, to set up these terms, concentrations with and without repetition, where concentration applies to the whole thing, right? You set up the terms meditative stabilization, which apply the whole thing. All of it is concentration, all of it is meditative stabilization. Then uh, it's Buddha Guya uses the terms concentration and meditative stabilization in an entirely different way. Talk about it entirely different way. They're on your chart. <laughs> <laughs> this was the only chart, I think, with this. That's why I noticed that it. it's good. So what's the difference? When you're doing deity yoga, self-based, and you do concentration as opposed to meditative stabilization, or you do meditative stabilization as opposed to concentration. Um, Everyone has more buttons? Page 67. Page 67. Um, on the bottom it says then, this is in the context of uh, the six deities, 
near the end of that, you were saying that stability is achieved um, through a style of meditation called meditative stabilization, which involves dwelling one pointedly either on the divine body in general or on a particular part. This usage of the term medita meditative stabilization is not to be confused with that in the term meditative stabilization of the resultant body. Is that what you were Yeah, now what about concentration? Right above. Right above. What does it say? For meditation to be successful, two factors are needed clarity and stability. Uh, clear appearance is achieved through a style of meditation called concentration. Clarity and stability. Calm abiding requires clarity. It actually is an intensity of clarity and stability. How do you get clarity? Say it. Through a style of meditation called concentration, which involves observing many aspects, either the six deities themselves or the specifics of the divine body. That means you serially, you know, go through, oh, the eyes are like this, right? And correcting this their is appearance like that. by adjusting. You know, Cabo Hall is like, so it goes down there, and then it goes over there, and there's another floor on top, which, and you, you direct your mind to it, and in time, the Capitol Hall mandala is appearing to your mind. And you know, you learn your way around the University of Virginia. It's just that you don't think of it as an appearance of your own mind. You separate it out, and it's inert matter that's appearing to you even in your imagination. Now, in the style of stabilization, you just you have brought this to the point where the whole thing appears, and you just stay with it. You're not going over the individual parts of it, say. So if you're meditating in your own body, it could be when the whole thing appears, or you just meditate on one part of it, the head, say. That would be meditative stabilization, without going around and adjusting the appearance. And you go back and forth, right? It seems, right? Yeah. And that includes with pranayama. Excuse me? With um, breath. Minute, breath, breath, control. Does it say that? What does it say? Um, this book is, that's really, I've been amazed. It was three or four years since I read this. It's chock full of information. You see, I did it after doing the translation, and, uh, you know, I've done a whole lot of research, and I don't know, well, I shouldn't praise my own book. But it, it's like it's totally divorced from me now. I'm not reading it and learning things. What does it say? <laughs> Um, this is on uh, 68. Um, dwelling in meditative stabilization indicates the other style of meditation, which is to fixate on either the divine body in general, general or one aspect of it within restraining vitality in parentheses, breath and Oh, I see. So you're, you're doing it when you're stopping breath. And then? Does it say that when you let out breath, you... Yeah, you, the, the bottom. What does it say? When you let out the breath, what do you do? Don't you just relax it a little bit? Or do you do some, or do you do concentration? I doubt it. Yeah, it's not, it doesn't look real relaxed at all. You <laughs> 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 require the binding of inhalation and exhalation of breath as Schulten dropped with Gelton, words that the latter requires an intense form of the practice of breath control and thus pranayama. Did I say that right? Uh, the restraining of vitality, which means both breath or wind, either breath or wind, and exertion, which means distraction, and is usually explained within the context of meditative stabilization. But then, during exhalation, as one is uh, taking cognizance of the deity in front at that point, isn't it? Or you're switching to yourself, depending on what you were looking at. You switch to the other one. Right? Yeah. So there's no clear statement in any of these texts about alternating concentration and meditative stabilization. It says you need both. You need to serially go through and make things clear, and you need to stabilize. But there's no, it, it doesn't say, well, at this point you stop doing concentration. Yes. You're on pitch 70, you, you do attach it to the breath, though. 
Uh, it's clear there you must do stabilizing meditation, right? Meditative stabilization. I'm sorry I interrupted you. Well, what you say is that while you're holding the breath, you're observing one part of the divine body, and then when you're no longer able to hold the breath, you relax by viewing and you use one's general divine body. Yeah, meaning more like the whole thing. Right. Concentrating on the head, and as you breathe out, your whole body is appearing to you. And then you come back and focus on that. But I don't think the, the exhalation period I don't think that that turns it into a period of concentration. Okay. Okay. So that's the next the one. Resting within meditative stabilization, mm -hmm. as opposed to resting. <laughs> What does it mean to be resting within meditative stabilization? In other words, you're holding your breath, and it's, you know, you're focusing intensely, say, on your divine head. And then when you breathe out, it gives you a little relaxation to look around at your general divine body. It does. And just think of it. Imagine. And then when you breathe back in, you go to here. But haven't you kind of wrecked your meditative stabilization by that? By shifting your this focus. is what's so interesting about these tantric practices of cultivating uh, uh, calm abiding. You're switching objects a lot. I mean, all within a format, but you're not just staying on one thing. And you're not losing your meditative state. No, you're making even it better. Though you're the, making even it though better. you're losing, even though changing an object. Because it's not as if your head disappears when you look at your <laughs> divine body, hopefully. Although, uh, Long Chamba says something like that. <laughs> In this terms of stabilization and concentration, is there one that you should do first? Should you start with the whole picture and then do the scanning and then come back to the whole picture? Should you start with <clears throat> one part and then build it up? Is it well, some people will do. The way daily rituals are done, you go through all of it. This is like concentration, setting up all the parts of it. First. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. And then concentrating on, on um, and then stabilizing. I can't, I can't talk my way out. <laughs> Do the terms concentrate? You need the five grams of and meditative stabilization in this usage, Stabilized. are they only within self-base? Say it again. The specific usages of the term concentration and meditative stabilization that we're talking about. Well, that's about. what I was wondering about. Because are they he only put, in self-base? You see, uh, on self-base, he put out, he made a division into concentration and meditative stabilization. And that's where the topic comes up. And so I was wondering. Just what you were wondering. You would think that concentration and meditative stabilization could come up throughout the whole thing. Yeah, I, I just assumed, but I don't know that there were general techniques that you would apply for instance, when necessary throughout the whole meditation. For instance, in the meditative stabilization of exalted mind, when you're reflecting on reasonings and so forth to establish the absence of inherent existence, that's certainly concentration. And then when you get, get a hold of emptiness, then you stabilize on that. So it would seem to me it would apply everywhere. So maybe it isn't so good in the chat. Also in exalted the Dalai Lama The Dalai Lama just says that it's 4 to 16. But what does he say, say within specifically? That, within that yoga, there are two modes of cultivating the 16 by way of concentration and by way of uh, meditative stabilization. In the first one, contemplates the 16 is a series uh, adjusting the clarity and so forth. And in the mode of meditative stabilization, one observes a single object, the general body of the, or the deity space. So he brings it up only in that context. Only in that context. And then the question arises, could one apply that to other contexts? He doesn't. Uh, none of them do. Uh, I would assume you could. What about an exalted speech with the inhalation and exhalation, where inhalation you're focusing on the letters, specifically on the edge of the moon at the 
deity's heart level and then exhalation you just focusing just on the deity without I uh, wouldn't you're think not fix you are not fixing the deities. It's right. one, one, one. But in one, a sense but one seems more concentrated versus I, I wouldn't one. say it was that. What's going through my mind anyway is that when you newly move on to any one of these new sections, uh, newly move on to new sections, <laughs> you would be doing concentration okay. in order to get it to appear to the mind. So one is just relaxing, I guess, then it's not. The exhalation is just a relaxing, it's not. Yes. Back, okay. That relaxing Within and concentration. revivifying the mind. Right. Re relax has that sense. Actually, here it says that um, though meditation by way of concentration, in which the divine body is contemplated in series, and then when he talks about um, stabilization, it says it's a single object, yes. one pointed. Yes. So uh, that would mean that concentration is series. Yes. It seems to make the difference here. And, um, yes. In this commentary. Yes. So again, back to that one. It, it's, it, it doesn't really fall into uh, this. Okay. Yeah. Concentration and stabilization. Thank you. And if you were doing something like this, you see, and going through the parts of it, that's in series. So why not carry over the vocabulary of concentration to this level, even if these masters don't? You see, that's, there's room in the text. Remember once in Dharamsala, uh, at the School of Dialectics, there was evening debate. And what some of the young monks would do, this means people in their 20s, which are still called boys, to the vocabulary, you become non-boy around age 35. <laughs> um, what they would do is an older scholar would come by. Uh, they would welcome him, gather around him. And it, uh, it was a real put on, put on thing and uh, you know, talk to him some, and get him involved in a debate. And then they would roast him. <laughs> it's like a, a uh, celebrity roast. Now, why was I bringing this up? I don't know what. Concentration and stabilization. And why we can I extend this uh, concentration? Oh, yes. Stabilization. Now, I remember one debate one day where the fellow lamely said, well, we can't give any answer to this problem because there's nothing in the text. And oh, was that thrown out. It's like, you know, once you've understood the principles, you ought to be able to expand it out. But then, of course, you can't claim that this is what the text says, right? So you have to clearly say that none of these masters uh, use, use this vocabulary. OK. 500 years from now. <laughs> yes, in this new system that we've created. So, five paths and ten grounds, huh? Concentration bestowing liberation of the inner sun, or is it after all of that meditation has been completed? So, when does one pass from the path of accumulation to the path of preparation? <laughs> In the last minute. With? After gaining the common, common body and special insight is attained, or at that point? Which is? At the end, during, at, is it during, during the end? cultivation, bestowing liberation at the end of When that is successful. Right. When Not at successful. the beginning of it, but when it's successful. Right. Right. Okay, so would you fix up your charts and uh, make a copy and hand in to me a copy of them and you keep the original uh, for next time. And the other thing for next time is we can now pass on to our next topic. Uh -huh. Next topic of the course, which is the difference between sutra and tantra. And, and the book and the course are arranged this way so that you have a clear idea of what deity yoga is, which you have a pretty clear idea of now. Now uh, we're going to go into, in a step, in a sense, take a step backward and see what's the difference between sutra and tantra. 
I really don't know how to do this. What I would like is we have Poudin, we have uh, Long Chimba, and we have Tsongkhaba. And in order to notice what all three are doing, you need to have read all three. And you even need, since Tsongkhaba looks at these, at least at Poudin, and criticizes the hell out of a whole lot of what's said, uh, one way to see what's going on in Poudin is to look at Tsongkhaba's criticism. And it's not that I want to jump on the bandwagon. I, for instance, with Longchimba, I want in this class to take Tsongkhaba's point of view and apply it to Longchimba. Take Longchimba's point of view, and, and it's more difficult, and apply it to Tsongkhaba. Now, the point is not to make trouble, uh, or to jump on somebody's bandwagon, but to notice what each of them is doing. Because then you can start saying after a while, all right, there are all these problems with the explanation, but what is the person doing? Do you follow? Sometimes to compare two apples and oranges doesn't help at all. But if you do compare an apple and an orange, you really know what you've got with an orange. You're just not asking it to be an apple anymore. Whereas you used to. <laughs> That's where my analogy breaks down. So uh, for next time, would you read the uh, chapter on, on Poudin, which is pages 99 to 123. And if you want to read uh, I, I would jump Long Chimba and read Songaba if you want to read something in addition, because that will help you to read song, to read uh, Pudin. Is that in this book also? The yes, it's it's in uh, chapter, nine. Okay. chapter nine. Oh yes, the paper topics. Uh, at the beginning of next class, you are going to remind me. Uh, to have a discussion about paper time.